Today on Ask Uncle Phil, I have a question from Zach Bray. Zach asks, how do aeroplane manufacturers minimise aileron drag? These control surfaces are known as ailerons and they produce roll around the longitudinal axis of the aeroplane. The downgoing aileron produces more lift and in consequence, more drag than the upgoing aileron. This produces a yaw opposite the direction of desired turn. This is a pit special, it's a Model S2A, one of my favourite aeroplanes. I've got many hours in these. Aileron drag is generally minimised by using two different methods that the manufacturers have uh, come up with over the years. The first one I'll mention is known as the Fries, F-R-I-S-E, sometimes pronounced freeze aileron. Now, how this works is quite straightforward. The aileron hinge is set back into the aileron so that when the upgoing aileron goes up, part of it protrudes below the surface of the wing, catching the relative wind and causing a little bit of extra drag on this side to try and match or cancel the drag from the downgoing aileron on the other side. Remember, it's the downgoing aileron that causes the problem. Now, the other way that manufacturers have treated adverse yaw or aileron drag is via a feature known as the aileron differential or differential aileron. That means that they've rigged the ailerons so that the downgoing aileron does not go down as far as the upgoing aileron goes up. This aeroplane has both Fry's ailerons and differential. Let's have a look. So let's see how far this aileron goes down. Here's a ruler and I can see that it protrudes about seven centimetres below the trailing edge. Now let's have a look on the other hand, I'll just have to move the control column, at how far it goes up. Let's measure that distance now with the ruler and we can see, well I can see, that it's about nine and a half, possibly ten centimetres. So the upgoing aileron goes up more than the downgoing aileron goes down. Some manufacturers use either one style of aileron, either the fries or the differential. Some manufacturers use a combination of both. This Cessna 150 has a combination of both as Cessna like to use that combination. Now let me just raise this aileron and as I do, you can see that the front part of it protrudes down below the level of the wing and that's going to create some drag on this side in order to balance the drag on the other side. It's fairly inefficient using drag to treat more drag, but it's a fairly common practice with Fry's ailerons and it works to a good degree. Now let's have a look at the differential aileron effect. If I move the aileron down and measure the distance from the trailing edge of the wing to the aileron, it's about seven centimetres. Now I move it up and you can see quite clearly there, it's about 10 and a half. So on your next pre-flight, check and see what kind of ailerons you have and make sure that they're full and free. Something jamming this up a bit.